Welcome. We're going to go ahead and get started because it is 2.31 and I value your time. So welcome to Tools for Teaching and Integrating Social Emotional Learning. And today we're going to take some time and really think about our practices as individuals for taking care of ourselves and how that impacts our students and their performance as well as our whole school environment. So um, I am bringing this to you from Solved Professional Development. It's also from New York State and the TAIL Academy. I just want you to know this is being recorded today. You will get the recording. Um, but if you prefer not to have your your beautiful face be on camera, we understand, but it's so helpful to all of us if we can see you, especially when you're chatting or when we go to the breakout rooms. I'd like you to just take a moment and read our norms for good meeting time today. I want you to know that I will definitely be starting and ending on time to be respectful of your time. And I ask you to really lean into the first one, which is take an increased stance, and the last one, which is be here now. We all have so much to do this afternoon, I'm sure, but take this time to be here and really think about how you can um, integrate these practices we're going to talk about today into your life. All right, so let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Caroline Hoppenwasser. I'm an educational consultant for SOLVED. I also have a doctorate in literacy. I started my career as a classroom teacher. And then for the past 14 years, I've been a college professor preparing teachers and literacy specialists um, at the State University of New York in New Paltz. I would love to hear from you in the chat who you are. Some of you are already doing this because you're wonderful and teachers know what they need to be doing. So you're uh, putting your name and the school or subjects you teach in the chat so we can see who all's here today. While you're doing that, I'm just gonna be reading through, welcome. I hope you've had a wonderful Monday and that your week is off to a good start and that you had a restful, a restful weekend. While you're uh, checking in in the chat, I'll just tell you what our essential questions are today and some of the things we'll be doing. Um, the big question here for us today is why is educator well-being, your well-being essential for high quality teaching and learning? And how can you incorporate more wellness rituals into learning environments? And the TAIL Academy is all about teaching across learning environments. So that's whether you're full-time in person in the classroom, you have some sort of hybrid, or you're all online. How can we uh, bring well-being practices in line. So we're going to think about and understand the value of these well-being practices for educators, consider the benefits and how to model these practices for students, and think of and identify some strategies for our own self-regulation. All right, I'm going to put in the chat a link to what I like to call the note catcher. I would like you to take a moment and open this. It's going to ask you to make a copy, I'm putting it in the chat right now. When you open it, it will ask you to make a copy. Go ahead and do that and you'll have everything that's referenced today and you'll also have a place to take notes if you would like to today. So at the very top, there's gonna to be a link to the slides you're gonna to see today. So you don't have to worry about taking down everything. And then there's gonna be places where we're going to have activities where we can write. Um, there's a video, there's links to that. So take a moment. If you have any trouble with that, we have a wonderful, wonderful um, support person here today who can help if you put any technical needs that you need help with in the chat. Um, Brooke will help with that. So I'm just going to double check. Someone said they can't open it. So I just double, mm -hmm. anyone with the link? can edit. Sorry about that. I will put in the fresh link. Open it again, everyone, and it should be working for you now. That was my fault entirely. 
All right, let's get started. Hopefully now the note catcher opens for everyone. Let's just start with a, a brief overview of what is social emotional learning. So um, in the chat or come off of mute i'd love to talk with you today when i say social emotional learning to you what comes to mind what do you think of what is your experience with it to this point what is social emotional learning bring to mind for you and you're again welcome to unmute yes i see someone is unmuted thank you yeah i did unmute but i think a little too soon hi <laughs> uh, a big, you know we're in 3k so it's yes. a little different the social and emotional we are continuously reinforcing the social and emotional so um it might be we might take a minute to deep breathe if someone's having a meltdown let's all right everyone let's try it now let's try deep breathing um we're getting to the point now where the other kids are actually making suggestions to the kids who are, who are in distress so they might say come sit over here and relax go sit in the bean chair and take a book um so for us it's it's I know it's a lot different when you get older because I taught older grades, but that's basically how we're supporting them. So, you know, socially and emotionally. And we love that the other kids are reaching out for the kids who are in distress, trying to help them work through their emotions. Yeah. And it's so important that you've started it with the tiny people because it is different when you get older, but it's also exactly the same. You have that strategy that you learned in kindergarten. You go and you're in 12th grade and you're stressed out, you still deep breathe. You're an adult, you're stressed out, you still deep breathe. So it's learning those and incorporating them and actually implementing them. Because one thing we can say we know what to do, but then to really show the kids know is the next level, right? They're telling each other and helping each other. That's amazing. And that's building the foundation of this. In the chat, we have um, people putting things, having conversations with the class to build relationships and understanding amongst students. Definitely means building strong relationships with self and others. That's, that's the key. And when you look at this circle that I have um, on our screen, that's what New York State defines social emotional learning as, and it has those pieces of self management and self management and self awareness, which are the self, social awareness and relationship skills, which is working with others, and responsible decision making, which brings in both pieces, being aware of our own feelings as well as the feelings of others, developing skills related to self. Y'all have, these are amazing. Read in your chat, assisting students with making better choices, understanding how another student may be feeling. So I wanna add to what Monique has said here. And again, um, I would like to say to you, if I mispronounce your name, I apologize, but I like to try and say the names of people to build our community in the time we have. And if I mispronounce it, I apologize. But I want to add on to what Monique says, assisting students with making, um, with understanding how another student may be feeling, but not just another student, but how a teacher. So how a staff member, how anyone in their sphere may be feeling. So it's not just student and student. It's a lot of work where I am getting everyone, whether it's the adults that I work with or the students that I work with, to be able to see their own emotions as well as those of all of the people around them, because we don't want them to forget that teachers have feelings as well. So helping students become more emotionally aware and supported. All right, so perfect. These are great understandings of social emotional learning. Today, we're gonna see how we can think about turning that love and attention on ourselves and how that's going to support our students as well. Um, and I just want to say to you in the note catcher, there is a table with these and brief de definitions of each of these um, 
five components, if that's helpful to you. But here's what I want. So here's where I want to start. You have to start with the self and I want to start with you today, how you are. And here's a question we ask people a lot. How are you? But what I want to know today is how are you really, really? Because a lot of times we do a very surface level. Oh, I'm fine. Everything's fine. I want to know what you're thinking and feeling today for real. And I've provided a place for you in your note catcher to take a few minutes and write about that. So you have, you can write about all of these things or you can pick and choose from your boxes. But at this moment, what's on your mind and in your heart? How are you really doing today? And possibly what are one or two things you have done or will do today to support your own well-being? So I'm going to give you um, three minutes to think about that and write for yourself and journal how you're feeling today. And then when we come, um, when the timer goes off, I will ask if anyone's willing or able to share today, either in the chat or on camera. So take three minutes to really get into your sense of well being and how you're feeling today. <clears throat> And if people just came in, I have put this a note catcher in the chat again to help you. It has these prompts. All right, time's almost up. So what I'd love for you to do now is if you feel comfortable, I'd love for you to share something, a little something in the chat, either about what's on your mind, how you are. This is a place where we, we welcome you however you are. You don't have to be fine today. If you are, great. And if not, let us know. Or if you would be willing to come on uh, camera and talk to us, um, about how you are today or anything that you are doing or will do to support your own well being. So I'll start, for example, today I have scheduled on my calendar time to walk my dog, not just when I have a moment. He gets his own scheduled time because that's my well being to go outside and enjoy some sunshine. Is there anyone willing to come on and share with us 
If not, I, I know you're out there typing into the chat. Go to the gym. Yes, it's so important, Mark, that we go and we get some exercise in some way. I'll go next. Um, Thank you. Go ahead. Um, I wrote that I'm feeling depleted and in need of rest. My weekend was busy doing things for like family and friends, so I'm feeling it today. But I'm going to deal with it because uh, later tonight I'll get to have dinner with my dad who's in town from Jamaica and my brother who's in town from Florida. So I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, nice. You have people who are going to fill you up. That's yes. so important to know that that's one of the ways you refill yourself is with your family. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Nadia says uh, she's starting to feel the burnout from state test prep. And I bet a lot of people are starting to feel that it's that time of year. So um, and trying to get the newcomer L's ready for, oh gosh, so much for the nice lot. But she's full of energy and getting ready to start a productive work week. All right. And she's going to make time to work to relax and connect with children. So again, that's like what Kenya was saying, a connection. Um, journaling daily, going to the park and walk, <laughs> enjoying the warmer weather, war weather. Oh my gosh, I want to have a private conversation with Vanessa about dog collecting, but your hobbies, you've got to find time for them. Um, mental cleanup of my goal is to schedule healthy eating. Yeah. How do we build all of those things in? Morning park walk, crystal collecting. I love y'all's collections. Taking a hot bath at the end of the day. Now, these are all amazing things that I hope you have put scheduled on your calendar. And they're not only going to help you, they're going to help others in your life. So let's, oh, wait, mindfulness moment. Let's take a little brief break together and do two deep breaths. And so I have throughout this the mindfulness cards and the link to them is on your note catcher, but you can have these for your class or individually and you just follow the line together. So everyone, let's stop and together let's inhale slowly, follow my arrow up this blue line. Breathing in all the way to the top, slowly, slowly breathing out. And I want you to think about breathing not into your chest, but deep into your belly. Breathing in to the belly, breathing out. This is something you can do individually with your whole class. This is something that's good for tiny people, but also can be used without being stupid for older people. It's wonderful. All right. Now let's talk about why it matters that we have in place uh, skills for you as educators. Um, this, you don't have to read the whole thing. I'm going to tell you the highlights. Teachers are more likely than the general population to experience job-related stress and symptoms of depression. One in four teachers considered leaving their jobs by the end of the 2021 school year. That first COVID year, at least one in four, probably more. And here's the big kicker. Adult well-being has an effect on student well-being, on motivation to learn, overall school climate and student academic performance. So instead of it being selfish for you to take care of yourself, you are actually being a better teacher by taking care of yourself. Um, so what I want you to come away from is uh, some of you may have the mindset of this second grade teacher from upstate New York who was very exhausted when students came back from COVID because everybody had to relearn how to be together in the building. And so she felt so exhausted, she didn't feel like she had time to take care of herself. So many teachers across New York can identify with that across the world. The sentiment of being too exhausted, helping students recover from challenges to help themselves. But we wanna remember the reverse is true if I help students reinvest and reinvest in my own social and emotional health, I am helping students. Every time I stop and help myself, 
I am helping students. All right, so we're going to watch a little bit of this um, SEL for teachers, in particular, the role of mindfulness. So your job is to listen to what resonates for you and how this might apply to your teaching situation. Can y'all for real go now, it's 2.50. Okay, so here's what I ask when I start the video, if you could just let me know in the chat that you can hear it, whether you can hear it or not, to make sure I've shared it correctly. The role teachers play in our children's lives is complex. Beyond simply teaching academics, teachers tune in to each student's unique background and abilities. At the same time, they must juggle new curriculum, new technology, high stakes testing, and many other demands. These are just some of the reasons why teachers find themselves in one of the most stressful professions. Learning to manage the stress is key to preventing burnout. But how do you do that? One way is to incorporate mindfulness into your daily life. I really like the definition of mindfulness by John Kabat-Zinn, who said that mindfulness is living in the present moment on purpose, non-judgmentally. And he often adds, as if our lives depended on it. And in some respects, our lives do depend on it because it is that capacity to be aware of ourselves and to recognize, wow, I, I, I am here, but I'm not really here. I'm in this classroom with 24 children, but my mind is finishing an argument that I had with my spouse last night, or my mind is worrying about what my teenage child um, might have gotten into last weekend, or my mother is ill and we're, we're struggling with whether she's going to have to go into some kind of a facility. I mean, these are, these are things that all people in all professions have to deal with, but when you're a teacher, and you're in the presence of 24 young people. And if you're not completely there, all kinds of things can, can go awry. So mindfulness is not about um, replacing negative thoughts with positive thoughts or forcing our thoughts to be different or to have fewer thoughts. It's really about um, applying the medicine of awareness and non-judgmental presence to the activities of the mind. So for example, if, if a thought drifts in about, uh, a, I'm worried about what's gonna happen six months from now um, with my work situation, for example, um, I could go into that story and go into ruminating and worrying and really live there and kind of see the scene play out of um, whatever it is that I'm concerned about. Uh, or I could just notice that thought that I'm worried about the future and then come back to the breath, come back to this very moment right now. What am I feeling? And shift the relationship to the thinking so that I'm not just fully fused with it and following the train of thought. When we think about it, um, when are we most stress-free? Um, I would argue that we're most stress-free when we are living in the moment on purpose non-judgmentally and that could be playing with your children or taking a walk in the park or listening to your favorite music or or reading a book where you're so immersed in that book whether you're working in the garden or pursuing any kind of hobby that kind of presence is is very very helpful for coping recovering and going back to school the next day and, and being refreshed. Mindfulness can also be helpful inside the classroom, especially when things don't go as planned. If we think about a scenario, and it could be at any grade level, right? Um, a teacher has a plan for the day. And they go in, and maybe they are excited about the plan. And they go in and they begin to, to, to carry it out. And they, maybe they have students working in groups, which they're excited about. They really want to promote that kind of feedback between students about their academic progress. Uh, there's lots of exciting things that are going on. Well, within about the first 15 minutes, it's all going south, right? 
as the teacher begins to recognize half of the students aren't prepared, they didn't do the assignment, and then I've got two groups that are run amok, one student's yelling at another, and it's starting to feel out of control. And so here's where mindfulness kicks in, right? Because if it doesn't, one can get so caught up in all of that that the stress begins to build, and then I'm, then I'm not doing a good job of emotional management myself. Now I'm part of the problem. I'm yelling at the kids, I'm telling them how frustrated I am, that, they're, that they can't get their work done. Or, or by the way, I could also go silent. I could go just, you know, this is, uh, you know, just sit down and, and just let it all play out because I'm, I'm, I'm not frustrated. But all of that can be best mediated if one can stop, take a moment, observe, and make a decision about how to get this back on track. It might be a decision to say, everyone just stop, please. Put your pencils down and just, just be with me for a moment. And, and in a calm voice, sort of talk it through, maybe even take a moment to engage students in, 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 a, in a mindful activity, putting their heads on their desk, and, uh, or whatever it happens to be, is a, more, is a more humane and a more intelligent and ultimately more helpful uh, solution. But failing to recognize what your mind is doing and how it's going to cause you to act, very problematic. Mindfulness is our way out. As Michael Singer, the author of The Untethered Soul, once said, and he said, look, uh, when you learn to be aware of your thoughts, when that becomes primary, being aware of your thoughts, more than thinking about your thoughts, that's your way out. That's, that's the door to freedom. Mindfulness is an effective way to manage stress, prevent burnout, and to be present, both at work and at home. For more information, check out the Ohio Department Hey, Caroline, you're muted. <laughs> Thank goodness for my helper. Okay, so Vanessa says, I don't even have time throughout my day to give into my personal life. And after work, I'm so exhausted. I don't even want to talk on the phone, which I totally understand. I, when I was a classroom teacher, people asked me questions all day. And I would go home and say to my husband, if you ask me one more question, I'll kick you in the shins. So what we need to think about, because we are always on as teachers, is how are we... Mm -hmm able to bring more mindfulness moments into the day and also engage our students with them so that we all have some small moments of decompression during the day. Uh, Donna says it's hard to manage everyone if we ourselves are in an unmanageable mindset, being concerned with everything at the same time. Um, so, and Vanessa says, boundaries, which is a key word, which no one wants teachers to have. They want us to do everything. So let's stop and talk about this for a moment and think about um, some self Department of education for ourselves, because one of the key strategies here, and then we're going to talk about how to share these with our students, because we want to bring them into this with us. It's not something that we need to secretly go do some breaths to get ourselves together and then go back to our class is something that we can engage them with the practice as well. So does anyone have some ways that they manage this? For example, um, Brooke shared that she has to make herself go take her dog for a walk after work. Um, she can't do it every day, but most just to clear her mind so that she has a transition is a clear built in transition from work life to home life. What else? Oh, Selena thinks it's important to have some calming time and play calming music or a calming video to have the students refocus. And what happens when the students have a moment to refocus? You have a moment to refocus. What are some, also something that you might wanna share with us are some roadblocks you find to having some of these moments in your classroom that we can help you with. I'm going to keep 
keeping an eye on the chat, but I want to move forward a little bit. Um, first, we're going to do another mindfulness moment together. We're going to do a very short mindful listening. So wherever you are, just stop for a moment, unless you're listening to this in the car, and close your eyes. And try to focus only on what you hear. Take time to notice all the different sounds. Notice where the sounds might be coming from and what they might be. Put in the chat some sounds that you heard. Vanessa has trained her mind to let go in transit because when she sets eyes on her husband and her son, she wants to enjoy them. What a beautiful intention to help you really lean into these mindfulness moments. I heard, and the key to doing this mindfully is here without judgment or feelings about it. So a lot of times we hear things and we're like, what did I know I noise? It's just like, hmm, just listen. Selena heard her dog crunching and munching on her bone. That to me is a great sound. Traffic outside your window, an airplane, a car, children playing and chattering, your air machine, all of those. And here's what's great about listening. It brings you right into the present moment, which is what that video talks about. How can we be mindful and in the present moment? So just listening helps you come here and sink into that moment and be calm, which is something we can help our students do. All right, so let's talk about modeling for our students. We are the model for our students. So um, in one part of my life, I was a literacy coach. And part of when I think of modeling, it's like if I want my students to be readers, I have to model that I'm a reader. So here's what I'm reading today. Here's the book that I, I love. Here's the next book that I'm reading. It's the same with our social emotional practices. Hello. So <laughs> why you so when we think about the big categories, social awareness and relationship skills, one of the things that we we can think about things as teacher wellness behaviors and modeling for students. So for example, in this scenario. Um, you have had a really intense and productive team meeting. You share with students the problem you worked on, how you work together to solve it, and be specific about how you listen to others' perspectives and showed empathy so that you're modeling how you do this with others as well as with the students in your classroom. And for each of these, I just have a little uh, a thing to help you remember. So we have, we're thinking about relationship skills. What are you doing with teachers in your building that you can share with students? And how will that be, um, how will that be adjusted by grade level? When we think about self-awareness and self-management, we're thinking about our emotional barometer I came to school today, I was stressed, my car broke down. How did I come in and how did I hit reset so that I can identify emotions, show students that I'm doing that throughout the day, what it looks like when I realize I've come under stress and what I do about it. So again, not just we're gonna stop and do some mindfulness practices, but you, modeling as the teacher, I've noticed I'm anxious. Here's what I do when I'm anxious. And then lastly, responsible decision making. Um, thinking about what our decision making process is for our class and sharing the decision making process, share the why of what you've decided and how you believe it will impact them, as well as different ways to um, 
model that process. So here's what, here's the problem I had to decide. And here were the solutions that were possible. And here's the one I chose and why. And if you want more information about that, we have, I'll talk to you about the other courses in this STL module um, at the end of our time. But the important part here is that you're taking time to make explicit to students how you're making these decisions and as well as asking them to do the same. So let's look at some protective factors that build teacher resilience. And then I'm gonna give you some time to look at some resources today that I put together from um, the TAIL Academy that can help you think about building your resilience and therefore having great strategies to model for your kids. So these are some that have been um, listed as being super helpful for teachers in building their resilience. Um, you probably can look at some of these and know which ones you have a lot of skills for and some that you might wanna develop more skills for. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you the opportunity to look, I'm putting the link to a Padlet into the chat. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So our Padlet has three boxes, but each of these resources has many, many hyperlinks so that you can, this one you're gonna have to scroll down to the this table, but it has that table I just showed you of the, um, the protective factors and it has a different idea or multiple ideas for each of those. You might try out the Supporting School Wellnesses Toolkit, which has for a whole section for teachers here, or you might look at um, why self-care matters and it has different ideas and resources. And I'm gonna give you eight to 10 minutes to look through these. And I want you to see if you can find at least one to two that you can see yourself finding a way to implement. And at the end of your time, I'm going to put you into a breakout room. I want you to share with the members of your breakout room what new mindfulness technique you want to try and how you will model that for students. So if you have questions about those directions, let me know. But if not, your time to start, I'm gonna stop sharing. Your time to start investigating this Padlet starts now. How do you see the Padlet? I've put the did I have to down. Did I have to download it? No, you should be able to click on the link in the chat and it should just open in a new window. Okay, well, I'm on a, my phone because I'm in the gym, I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay, well, hopefully this. it will open, um, it will work the same way. Okay, Give it a let try me and let us know. Yes, it opened up. Wonderful. All right. Go explore.
All right, everyone, I'm about to open the breakout rooms. You'll just need to click to join in your breakout room. Your big question is, what do I want to try? What am I going to try for myself? How will I model it for students? Um, I just ask if at all possible when you go in your breakout room, if you would turn your camera on so your fellow breakout room members will know that you're actually there. It's super helpful. If not, we understand. But if you can, we appreciate it. So here we go. I'm opening all rooms. You'll have eight or so minutes to share, and then we'll come back and wrap up. If you're having any trouble moving, let us know and we're happy to try and help you. Uh, do we just go over the charter? Has everyone done that already? Or? Hello, hello, hello. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> you too, many blessings. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Carolina, are you speaking to me? Sorry, I, have, oh. I haven't heard from these four people who are still here. So I think we've done our very best. Okay, cool. Getting people where they need to be. Yeah, the breakout rooms worked really well. I joined that one and um, it was great. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Oh, one more person went. Okay. Oh no, she went to room six and there's no one there. 
Uh, Joan, I'm going to put you in a different room because we had trouble in, with room six. Maybe Senator room one. Okay, yeah. no problem. Thank All right, you. I'm moving you to room one. Thank you. I'm having trouble. I should have let you do it. I should have let you do it, Brooke. I had no, trouble. Right. And Joan still has it. Uh, yeah, I'm still here hanging on to nothing. <laughs> okay, I think I've got it now, Joan. I apologize. Okay, my dear. No problem. All right. So, okay, join. All right. All right. I got lost there for minutes, but it's all good. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh gosh, it's already 322. Poor Joan. She's gonna be there for one hot second. All right. Mm -hmm. So you went to breakout room and you saw that it was going well. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Were you able to see any times that might be good to share that we could do I a clip a few, of? I saw yeah. a few. I would say like um, there was more interaction in the chat than speaking. Was, so yeah, but it was you know, good. yeah. And so um there's a few times that I that I have that I could share. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, this group's very good with the chat. They're very good. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna send them to I literally just did timestamps. Perfect. Thank I'm you. I'm gonna send them to you so you can just take a note of them. Go save those before something bad happens to them. And I do have to step out right before um, 3.30. I have another meeting coming up, but I'll be good right before it. Okay. All right. We should all be coming back. Let's give everyone the 15 seconds until this um, the rooms close. And what if you're already here, would you mind putting in the chat um, something that you would like to try? For yourself, that is a takeaway from you today. All right, everyone should be back. So everyone, please take a moment in the chat and tell us what is an action you have as a goal for yourself to try in the upcoming week. I'm going to share my screen again while you do that. Oh, lovely. Look. Let the other people here inspire you as well. One moment. What is your are you going to try this coming week? Hold on, I lost the chat. Here it is. We've got uh, someone who's going to start journaling once a week, more healthy coping styles, meditation as a brain break using the Go Noodle app, 
Amazing. Digital journals, the calm down corner. Barbara, you can send yourself to the calm down corner as well as the students. I think everybody can go to the calm down corner. Amazing. Brain break. Great. So I want you to leave here with one thing you're going to try. And I also want you to think about how I'm going to model it for your classroom. So let's see. One goal I have for myself is to try personally and in the classroom is personal positive reflection, thinking and modeling one positive talk a day and have a few students each day speak of one positive thing that they tried or worked for them. That's a beautiful example. It's a very manageable example as well. So what I want you to think about is what's something manageable you can do. So if you can have one personal positive reflection, you model one a day and then you start asking students to do the same. Mind teasers to help students focus. So one of those mind teasers we're gonna end with now because I want you to have, um, we're gonna end here together with, and this is a positive thoughts, mindfulness moment. So the last thing I want you to do today before we have our closing, we have three minutes. This takes one minute is again, close your eyes. And this time, I want you to picture someone you want to send a positive thought to. And guess what? It can be yourself. So I want you to imagine, think, visualize that person. Think about the positive thought that you have for them. And imagine sending that thought to that person. So one way I do this, I imagine wrapping it up as a gift. And I imagine myself handing it to that person. So today I'm sending my positive thought to all of you. And it is, you are worth taking time to take care of. You are worth the moment it takes. Beautiful. All right. I want to show you real quick. We, any comments or questions, you can come off and talk to me or you can put them in the chat. But I want to show you, we have three SEL courses here at Solved. You're at C, Tools for Teaching and Integrating. Um, in May, we'll be doing this series again. So if you're interested in taking A, the importance of social emotional learning, or B, how to create the SEL classroom, you can find that on your, uh, the where to register for those. It's on your um, note catcher at the bottom is a link to all of the soft pro professional developments from TAIL. And the last thing I ask for you to do for me today is to fill out this survey. It's very short, but it helps us here at SOFT make sure we're doing the very best job that we can do for you. So I appreciate all of your thank yous in the chat. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for taking a moment to breathe and take care of yourself. And I appreciate um, in advance you taking another moment to fill this out. And as soon as you're done with that, um, you're, you're free to go. Um, you will be getting an email follow-up from Solved that has all of the information from this professional development session today, as well as your professional credits information. So as soon as you're done, please go out, enjoy your day and find a moment to take good care of yourself.